Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we have another Tropics update, and there is a lot to talk about if you see what's on screen right now. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also like to invite you to join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook groups down below. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that Invest 99L, and if you don't know what that is, you will later, Will it become a hurricane or will it stay under hurricane status? And I know that's crazy to think about, but you'll see what I'm talking about later on in this video. Now let's get into this video and we're taking a look at all three of our tropical invests right now. Uh, we have one there near Texas and Louisiana and look, this one is just an area of thunderstorms. This one is probably going to fizzle out. I highly doubt this will even become a tropical depression. So we can pretty much rest easy with that one. Some heavier rains, some thunderstorm type activity for Louisiana and Texas is the most you can expect from that one. Now also we have our storm we talked about yesterday there over Cuba and the Bahamas. It has developed quite a bit and it has a 10% chance of developing within the next 20 or 48 hours, sorry. Uh, and it's going to head generally towards Florida and Cuba, right in between there, maybe Key West. And then it's going to probably head towards Texas, I would say. We'll talk a lot about that within the next little bit of this video. But what I really want to talk about mostly in this video is we have our first invest in what we call the MDR, or the Main Development Region. And that's the one you can see furthest down there to the east, obviously. And it's down pretty far south. That is our storm we really want to watch. I think it will become a hurricane. Now we're about to move on and take a look at many, many more things about all of our invests in the Atlantic right now. All right, and here we are taking a look at the satellite imagery for 99L. This is that one that's furthest east. When I refer to it as 99L, you'll know which one I'm talking about from now on. This one already has a good spin to it, very tall clouds. This one is not struggling. It's actually thriving, matter of fact. I think there's a good chance that within the next 48 hours, we will have a tropical depression. Uh, this one is going to develop very rapidly. It is over the most favorable conditions in the Atlantic right now. Um, so this one has a very, very uh, bright future, I guess you could say, uh, as far as development because it is about to move over some very favorable waters, and I don't see anything holding this one back. Now, as far as our five-day graphical tropical weather outlooks, let's take a look at this Texas one. Again, 10%. It's going to head towards Texas, but really, it's not going to do anything. Uh Let's take a look at this second one. This was our original one from yesterday. As you can see, again, it's going to move north of Cuba, south of Key West there, and probably head towards Texas or Louisiana. I would give this one about a 50% chance of becoming a tropical depression and about a 20% chance of becoming a tropical storm. So that's where we're at about right now. Anything else is below tropical depression status because there's practically no chance of hurricane status. Uh, now, what the interesting thing is, is I said for this one uh, yesterday, I actually said this to a few buddies of mine. I said, this one has the most potential so far this Atlantic hurricane season out of any of the other storms we've had so far to develop. Uh, and that was until today when we saw 99L develop. Now that one has more chance of developing and it has the brightest future out of any of the ones we've had so far, including the one heading into the Gulf right now. What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the sea surface temperatures and we're going to talk all about 99L and why I think it will become a hurricane. All right, now we're taking a look at our sea surface temperatures here and take a look at how red it is, how orange and red. This one is going to be heading right into the Virgin Islands, south of Dominican Republic and Haiti, right where we have those temperatures at about two degrees above average. And those are some of the warmest waters as is on average. So this one is going to have the easiest time developing. I think a category uh, two seems pretty realistic, one or two eventually with this one. I would say category three and above is possible as well. And look, when I say that a category one or two is possible or likely, you know, I still think there's a chance that we stay at about tropical storm status, but I am very confident this one will at least become a named storm uh, based on the areas it's heading towards. Let's take a look at its five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and this is where it's looking to head. It only has a 20% chance within the next five days, but that's because it's not heading into the favorable areas yet to that point. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but once it crosses over the Virgin Islands, that's where the development becomes very, very likely and much more favorable. This is our ocean heat content, and this is a really good tool just to see 
where we're at as far as favorability for tropical development. And as you can see, where it's at now has about greens and yellows, which is pretty moderate to high. But if it moves south of Haiti there and south of Cuba, it's going to be in those deeper red. That's where we would need it to head to become a hurricane. And then eventually it would probably head into the Gulf from there, which would be very bad news. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the intensity guidance, the spaghetti model guidance for 99L. We're also going to take a look at the European models, probability of tropical depression, things like that. And then we're going to take a look at what the GFS and the Canadian model have to say individually. And then we're going to do our official direct weather forecast, first off for our Gulf Storm, and then second off our first one for Invest 99L. All right, now here's that intensity guidance that I was talking about here. As you can see, we only have three models on board with this one so far, and each of them has it becoming a Category 1 hurricane already within the next 10 days, probably by about day 7 there. Uh, they have it crossing over into tropical storm status within the next 72 hours, but likely within the next 48 hours. Probably would become a tropical depression within the next 24 hours. They're being very aggressive with this. I would say it could take a little bit longer for each major stage here. However, I am on board with this very rapid development and also very uh, developing quite far into the spectrum here. Let's take a look at the spaghetti models we have available to us so far. Uh, and as you can see, most of them have it heading south of Dominican Republic and Haiti. But we do have two that take it kind of on a northerly track, kind of similar to a Dorian track where it heads just to the east of Puerto Rico there. Uh, if it was to head over Puerto Rico, we would see it actually struggle a little bit. So what would be best for its development would be if it was to the east of Puerto Rico there. Uh, it would likely curve out to sea if it was to take that track. If it heads south of Dominican Republic and Haiti, development is going to be much more favorable. And also it would be tracking right towards the Gulf of Mexico where it would likely become a hurricane and then impact some states or possibly Mexico, something like that. Here's our GFS ensemble model. As you can see, the GFS ensemble model is on board with it developing and also heading straight south of Dominican Republic and Haiti. So this one does not think it will head north of those areas where it would be a little less favorable. Here's our Canadian ensemble model where it's kind of the same story, mostly has it developing and heading south of Dominican Republic and Haiti. We do have one that heads north of Dominican Republic and Haiti. And the interesting note I want to make here is that this one has it developing the least. So development... Development will be much more favorable if it heads in uh, south of Dominican Republic and Cuba there. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to move on, take a look at our European model, ensemble models, um, uh, chance of development into tropical depression. And then we're going to take a look at what the Canadian model has to say on map, actually, because it's kind of interesting. And then we're going to get into our individual forecasts for both of these. All right, now here's our European model's chance of tropical depression status. And here is for our Gulf Storm. It has a 50 to 60% chance of tropical depression status before it reaches Texas there. I'm definitely on board with this. I think we're very likely going to see a tropical depression. Let's take a look at the wide view of the Atlantic. And it does have that main development region uh, developing further, having more storms moving off of Africa into the Atlantic. I said this was going to be happening in a previous video. And sure enough, it is occurring now. The only thing is it has not hopped on board with our um, it has not hopped on board with our 99L at all. I expect that that's going to happen today at some point, but this model is kind of finicky where it won't want to show certain things. And then it hops on board really big, uh, and I expect that that's going to happen soon. This one, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't develop pretty far. Now, here's by the 27th through the 30th, and you can see it still has more waves coming off of Africa. So we are heading towards an active period. The MJO is about to become more favorable here very shortly, and that's when I expect very, very big things. We have a sinking motion in the Atlantic right now, and we still are seeing these storms popping up. I can't imagine what it's going to be like once we see a rising motion. I expect many invests, many tropical storms, and also many hurricanes. All right, now let's take a look at that Canadian model like I said before. First off, uh, we see that our storm over Cuba, it interacts with Cuba a lot on this model. Uh, and this is by tonight, actually. And then as you can see, it actually, uh, you can hardly see it, but it's offshore of Texas there. Very weak, probably tropical depression maximum. 
Uh, so really, again, that one does not have the best chance of developing into a tropical storm. It does have some chance, uh, but certainly probably won't be a hurricane. Let's take a look at our next invest as Invest 99L moves past the Virgin Islands. Again, there's a little bit of vorticity here, but not very much because it's just now moving into those favorable waters. As we can see, by the time we reach 2 p.m. on Sunday, it develops very rapidly and it has a lot of vorticity here south of Haiti. Then it moves kind of past Jamaica and we see those blacks. That's kind of maximum vorticity. I would say this is a category one or two hurricane by that point. And then it moves further into the Gulf here. And actually it's pretty far in the Gulf, far south in the Gulf that is. Their uh, location is not guaranteed. This could impact anywhere. It also could hit the southeast or the east coast anywhere. This one has unlimited possibilities just because of the location of it right now. Uh, we're really going to need to move forward and just see where we, we think this one's going to go. So let's move on to our graphical forecast here from direct weather. First off, here's our Gulf Storm. Uh, really, this one's going to move pretty rapidly into the Gulf and eventually impact either Mexico, Texas, or Louisiana with pretty minor impacts, I would say. Uh, flooding rain is possible. Winds are going to be quite minimal unless this one surprises us all and becomes maybe a stronger tropical storm. I don't really see winds being too much of an impact with this one. Now, Let's take a look at the one that I really want to talk about here, Invest 99L. And again, this one's possibilities are pretty much endless at this point. It's going to move westward pretty rapidly. And again, the Virgin Islands there is really the staple point where I think it's going to rapidly develop after that point. Don't expect too much development before that point. But once it moves into those warm Caribbean waters, I expect quite rapid development unless something occurs uh, that really hinders that. I see that there's a better chance that it moves south of uh, Dominican Republic, Haiti, and also Puerto Rico. I think it's going to move south of there, south of Cuba, into the Gulf. There also is a slim chance that it moves north of Puerto Rico, where it would possibly either curve out the sea, possibly still go into the Gulf, or impact the East Coast. Again, after this seven-day period, really, uh, possibilities are quite endless. Now, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is going to happen with this Gulf storm that we have? And smart kids said a really smart comment and said, most likely tropical depression, maybe a weak tropical storm. And if you've been listening to me throughout this video, you can tell that I quite agree with that actually. All right. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.